Hello there. Everyone, this is your notice to please delint yourselves. So, alternative milks. I like them. I like them a lot. In fact, as many of you noticed, I am a barista who, while I do indulge in dairy frequently, my body doesn't always love that I do so. And so for most of the time, I drink a lot of alternative milk, specifically oat milk, which happens to be my favorite, but there, there's a lot of them. There is almond milk, there is soy milk, there is coconut milk, there's rice milk, hemp milk, there's pea milk, there's macadamia nut milk, there is oat milk, there's probably like five others that I'm not even listing right now. There's a lot of them. And overall, I'm kind of picky. Like I pretty much exclusively drink oat milk at this point because there's not a lot of the other ones that I personally enjoy. Now that will vary person to person, but I don't know. I think I should be able to like more than just oat milk. So today we have four different ingredients, four strange ingredients, perhaps when you think in the realm of milk, I'm gonna try to turn them into alternative milks that perhaps I may like. Now. I bought a thing because while I do think it is possible to turn all of the things that I have over to the side into plant-based milks, I'm not really in the business of doing that completely by hand in terms of like squeezing and juicing and mashing up all of these. So I bought a thing, a thing that is going to help us. And I think that I am very excited to open up. So let me go grab that. It's the almond cow. <laughs> this is a little machine that will apparently turn whatever food product that I have into an alternative milk. This is not sponsored by almond cow, by the way. This is just a tool we are gonna be using to make our lives slightly easier. Okay, comes in a bag. This is fun. Is the idea that one can carry this on their back, perhaps? feel a little bit like I'm on my way to take the one ring to Mordor, but that aside, let's see what this thing actually looks like. Okay, the almond cow. So we have the dangerous part right here, which has blades kind of similar to a blender that I imagine is just gonna like emulsify everything as it's being juiced, if you will. We have a couple different, a couple different containers for things to go in. And then the inside of the main body is Pretty boring. We've got two different markings, a maximum marking and a minimum marking for our water. Oh, and we also have a plug and some instructions and a sticker, so good stuff. Now, before we plug this in and I pull over our ingredients and tell you what sort of strange milks we're gonna make today, I wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video who is nordvpn.com slash morgandc. Now, in case you didn't know, NordVPN protects your internet data with next generation encryption and ultra fast servers so you don't have to sacrifice security or speed. This means that when you're sitting down at your local cafe to do work or getting onto any sort of public Wi-Fi, you can rest assured that your internet data and privacy is secure. And even better, with one singular NordVPN account, you can connect and secure up to six devices, which means you can secure all your devices and still have room left over for a friend or loved one as well. NordVPN also has over 5,200 servers in 60 countries, meaning you can find a server near you for better speed or in a faraway location for more content. So if you're ready to get started to make NordVPN your internet security plan like I've made up mine, now is the time because you can go down to the link in the description, which is nordvpn.com slash morgandc to get a two-year plan plus, plus you get four months at a huge discount when you use code morgandc. Again, that is nordvpn.com slash morgandc and use code morgandc. DC. Thank you again to Nord for sponsoring today's video. Before me, I have four bowls of things. Things that I think could make interesting alternative milk. Starting over here, I have black sesame seeds. I have corn, potatoes, and peanuts. All of these, I think, have the potential to be good. I'm really looking for an alternative to oat milk, and I think it could live in one of these. So with that being said, let's get started. I need to plug this in somewhere. Can you go? I guess I expected more from it. Um, all that happened was the little light, little light on top has turned on. What do I actually do here? Hang on, I have instructions somewhere. Here are the vague instructions. Number one, fill base with water to the minimum or the maximum line. Number two, fill filter basket to the one cup line with your ingredients. Then three, hold sideways and secure filter basket to the left. And the little instruction says put this and connect it to the top. Then attach top and power cord. And number five, press the cow. And then six, pour and enjoy. So I guess already I've put this in the wrong order. So I'm going to detach the power cord. 
Then we have some cleaning instructions and that is about it. So I say we start with the black sesame seeds. Let's just go for it. I have also brought with me some complimentary things that I think are going to improve our milk flavor and texture overall. For sweeteners, I brought both dates and I have honey. I also have vanilla, which we might add to some of these. And then I have salt as a balancing agent. This is a lot of water. This is gonna make a healthy amount of milk. Okay, so to start off, now I, I did soak these black sesame seeds for a little bit because based on online research, that seems to be the thing to do. I have approximately one cup of black sesame seeds here. It's gonna be a messy day. All right, now I think both dates and honey might be really nice for this. So I'm gonna do two dates. That feels right. We're also gonna do a drizzle of honey. I have said it once. I will say it again. I think everyone should make things to their own desired sweetness. I like things to be pretty sweet and I know that. So I'm not gonna give you a, a direction here. Do it to your heart's content. Just honey your milk with reckless abandon. That felt like a drizzle. Maybe a pinch of salt. I think we're ready to go. Secure it back on top. Now we plug it in and I press the cow button. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just gonna let it do its thing. I'll come back when it's done. Was that it? The light is, hang on, hang on. Okay, it says, when the green light is solid, your milk is ready. It's solid. Let's pour it out. Let's see what is occurred within this device. And then let's make, let's make some more. That was really easy. Oh, wow. Okay, that's fun. It smells pretty good too. Sesame milk, number one, that went far better than anticipated. Now I am very excited for potato, peanut and corn. So let me clean this out and let's just keep going on our, our milk adventure. I think we shall do our corn milk next. Now I have cleaned this and refilled it with water to that like minimum water line, which I guess I looked up is about five cups of water. Now we have about one cup of fresh corn here. Now this was boiled and then cut off the cob. So this has been softened. This is not just like direct corn off the cob. This is boiled corn now, as we did before, right into our come back. You get to be milked too. Now for this one, I think I'm just gonna use honey as a little light sweetener and then some salt. My reasoning for this is because corn goes to corn cornbread goes to whipped like honey butter that goes on cornbread. So that seems like a good combination. So healthy drizzle. Actually, we're gonna double drizzle on this one. Little crack of salt, back to the machine. At least this time I like have some understanding of what to expect. That was truly alarming last time. So that's a color to the fridge with you and on to peanut. Round three, I have one cup. Ah! One cup minus three peanuts. These peanuts are roasted, but they are unsalted and unsoaked. To these, I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of vanilla paste. I'm going to add three dates and a good amount of salt. back to the machine. I'm very curious to see how these grind up because out of out of all the ingredients we've done so far, these have the least liquid just inherently in them. Like that corn basically turned into juice by the end of it. This, however, we'll see. Fire in the hole. I neglected to buy four of those tiny cute jars. So a cup it is. This one definitely seems the most milk-like out of everything we've done so far. Oh, you guys, this one might be the one. I'll hold off making any calls until we taste everything as a latte, but that smells really good. Okay, we still have potatoes to do, so clean up, stick it in the fridge, then we'll make some potato milk. That feels wrong to say. It's time for potato milk. So. Almond Cow actually had a recipe of their own for potato milk. So apparently I'm not the first one to think of doing this, which is unfortunate. I was really hoping that this could be like my brainchild, but it's not, and that is totally fine. So I'm gonna follow their tried and true recipe for potato milk. And I actually figured out, this is where the collector, collector cup, hang on, what was it called? Yes, the collector cup, that's what we're calling it. So we're not actually gonna be filling up the base with five cups of water like we have for all the previous milks. We're actually gonna be filling up our collector cup with about 500 milliliters of water. So if you look on here, doo -doo -doo, that is about 
right there. So a little different structure here. The recipe also asks for almonds to be added alongside the potatoes. So we're just gonna follow what they've instructed and hopefully we have potato milk by the end of this. Now I skinned and boiled these potatoes already. These were just Yukon gold potatoes. There was no instructions on what sort of potatoes one is supposed to use when making potato milk. So Yukon gold potatoes, skinned, boiled, so they are softer now. We're gonna add about three quarters of a cup. Now we have one quarter of a cup of unsoaked, just plain, unsalted, unroasted almonds. And I think we're gonna go honey, salt, and vanilla on this one. So healthy drizzle. For this one, a quarter teaspoon of vanilla paste, and then some salt. Okay, so we have our ingredients sanctioned off here. We have 500 milliliters of water. I am now supposed to just set it directly inside the base and then set this on top. Now, what happened was all of our ingredients that are right now in that little filter basket are submerged in the water that's in the collector cup. So it is significantly less water than what we did in the last recipes. And hopefully that means it's gonna be a nice thick, like really nice milk. Milk texture-like. I'll never get used to this. Ah! Well, you know, the texture does indeed look very nice. Imagine this is gonna be quite a starchy milk. It doesn't particularly smell like potatoes, but th then again, I don't think potatoes really have like a strong scent to them. It's mostly texture and like vague flavors. Let's go set it aside. Let's get some espresso ready. Let's get ready to make some very interesting lattes. Well, I think we have our four milks, well, three milks and arguably one that looks like orange juice already. Starting on this side, we have potato milk, we have black sesame seed milk, we have peanut milk, and then we have corn milk. The two I am most excited for, although I'm excited for all of them, the two I'm most excited for would be the black sesame seed milk and the peanut milk. I think these two stand the best chance of being good, like legitimately good. I think the texture of this one is gonna be nice. However, I'm, I'm still a little conflicted on like the idea of potato milk. So I'd like to test them all as is just to get an understanding of what they taste like. And then we're gonna add our espresso and have them as lattes. First off in a glass that is far too fancy for the drink that is within it, we have our potato milk. Now, if you'll remember, this is a blend of potatoes and almonds, like a little bit of them. This was also made with less water than the rest of these. So I'm really hoping for a creamy, just pleasant, neutral milk here. That is not bad. That is really pleasant, actually. Texture-wise, there's there's a little bit of a graininess to it. It is fairly sweet. I think adding the vanilla beans was a very good choice because that really like rounds out the flavors. If I was given this, I don't think I would know that it was potato milk. The thing that is most potato-y about it is the texture. It's very starchy. It's very like, thick and kind of coats the inside of your mouth. But flavor-wise, it is it is nothing like I was expecting. It doesn't taste like almonds. It doesn't completely taste like vanilla. It's, it's nice. It is nicer than I was expecting. This might actually be a completely decent latte. Next up, we have our black sesame seed milk. Now this one has a very, very strong scent to it. It smells very much of black sesame seeds. If you handed me this, I would know exactly what it was instantly. And it's a good thing. I like sesame flavors, but as a milk with sweetener in it, could be interesting. Off the bat, it's interesting. It's it's instantly more watery than the potato one was, but that makes sense. It's black sesame seeds rather than being like a hearty, starchy, like thick root vegetable. They're a vegetable, right? Yeah, anyways, root vegetable like <laughs> potatoes are. We're also using a much larger proportion of water to our solids, I guess is probably the best word to say. Flavor-wise, it's it's nice, it's light, it's refreshing, it's really not that sweet. The sesame flavor is a lot stronger in smell than it is flavor, but it's nice. I just wish the texture was a little bit nicer. Now for the one that is intriguing me the most, we have our peanut milk. Pretty excited about this. First of all, because nut milks have been a thing for ages. I mean, arguably the second most popular alternative milk is almond milk, which is also a nut milk. Interesting. This one has a thickness 
right in between these two. It is not as thick as the starchy potato milk, but it's not watery in the slightest. I would say this is a this is a pretty good consistency for a homemade alternative milk. The texture is interesting. You can definitely tell that this is a ground up nut of some sort. Um, it's kind of grainy, it's a little bit pasty, but that honestly adds to the consistency, which I prefer the graininess over wateriness. So I think that's a plus in that category. Flavor wise, it's, it's way lighter than I thought it would be. And it kind of tastes like you melted peanut butter into a cup of milk. That's the best way I can describe it. And it's, it's nice, it is very nice indeed. I would very much be able to tell that this was peanut milk if you handed me this on the street. Don't know why you'd do that, but if you did, I could probably identify it. And finally, our illustrious corn milk. This is the one I'm most concerned about, you might say. This is fairly watery. I mean, granted, you have a ton of liquid still held in those corn kernels, plus as much water as we added. So this is more of like a, a corn juice. <laughs> I mean, all of these are, are juiced food objects, but this, this is the most juicy out of all the things that I'm trying to turn into milk. <laughs> the flavor is light. It is sweet. It is not corn-like in a bad way. It's corn-like in a nice summer sweet corn, corn off the grill sort of corn way. And that's all I have to say about that. Let's put some espresso in these. We've got some interesting colors going on here. I think we should drink them. Starting on this side with our potato milk. Texturally, it's nice. Flavor-wise, there's something wrong <laughs> happening in my mouth right now. Ooh, mm, some weird flavors that come out of that. The flavors of the potato alongside the flavors of the espresso almost leave it tasting ashy, which is not normally desirable. I'm sure there is someone out there that desires that, but that person is not me. The color of this drink is certainly questionable, but will it be good? Kind of. You know what? That's actually kind of good. I would think of this less as a latte. I think this turned out much less milk-like than I would have liked it to. Instead, it's almost like an Americano, uh, like a, a neutral sesame flavor underlying it, which honestly, tastes pretty good. Now, I think there's a lot you could do for the aesthetics of this drink, but sesame milk, if you will, not too bad. Peanut milk. Oh, I am excited for you, buddy. That is pretty solid. That's pretty good. I, you know what? This one is my favorite by far out of all of these. You know what? The texture is still there. It's still a pretty thick, creamy milk. I think peanuts and coffee are really complementary flavors. I kind of view them as being in the same little like circle on the scale of flavors, if you will. Like up up here on, on the brighter end of flavors, if you will, you might have like acids and fruits and berries and maybe some spices even. Whereas like if you move down here, you get some like richer, like darker flavors like peanuts and chocolate and coffee and things like that. And I, I feel like these are pretty complimentary together. If I was to make this milk again, I think I would kind of double strain my milk. I think there was still kind of that pastiness that I mentioned earlier that isn't the best, but just by putting this through a cheesecloth, I think you'd get rid of this, but all in all, very nice. And now you, oh, corn milk. <laughs> Corn juice. What I have here, I believe, is corn juice and espresso, which mm, seems cursed. Well, it's not great. It's not nearly as offensive <laughs> to the palate as perhaps this one was, but it's corn juice and coffee put together. It's, it's about what you expect it to be. So I think the pretty clear winners of these two are the black sesame milk and the peanut milk. And I think the pretty clear winner, out of the two of them at least, is peanut milk. That is very tasty. That is very complimentary to coffee. And I don't know, it's a good deal. <laughs> I'm glad to have found one thing that I really enjoy out of the interesting, if you will, ingredients that we tried today. I'll also give a thank you to this lovely little almond cow machine, because I don't think if I had done this by hand that I would have survived with half as much sanity as I feel I have left now. I think that sentence made sense. Now, if you have other things that you like to put in your alternative milks, I would love to know because with this thing, I can make alternative milks shockingly easily. In fact, maybe dangerously easily. So let me know if you have any further suggestions of things I should try in the comments down below. In the meantime, I am Morgan Drinks Coffee on almost every platform that I'm active on. You can find me here on YouTube once, 
sometimes twice a week. So subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram, which I post almost every single day. Now, I think I'm gonna head off, go drink the rest of my lovely little peanut latte, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. There are plenty of links down in the description if you would like to explore more things, including a link to our wonderful sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. Again, if you wanna check out the deal that they have offered all of you, click the link in the description. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time. <laughs>